Candles are convenient, but they can be jolly dangerous. And if you use them out camping, they can set fire to the grass, or to the tent, and then the bush, and then everything around you. Unless you have them under a protective cover, and that you can make out of gauze. Well, the gauze story is an interesting one, because they used to use candles down the mine, in coal mines. But of course, there's coal gas there, and it used to light up from the candle, there'd be a great wump, and people underground died. Until Humphrey Davy came along and found that flame didn't go through gauze. At least, bronze gauze, or iron gauze like this. It goes as far as the metal, and it just doesn't go beyond it. And even with an inflammable gas, like coal gas, I've got a cigarette lighter here, if I light it up, and then blow it out, you'll find it lights very easily from the candle the way coal gas did, unless I put ga the gauze in between. Then the flame will light on the other side of the gauze, but it won't backlight to the cigarette lighter. And so he made little lamps which had the candle inside, a whole lot of gauze, and they didn't set fire to the, um, the gas outside them. And that's what you can do with a candle, to stop the flame setting fire to anything outside the candle holder. Let's move that away and see what we're doing. First of all, it has to be things like bronze gauze or iron gauze, Aluminium is no good, and I'll show you why in a tick. But what you do is to start with a piece, well, an offcut like this, and cut a triangle which is about twice as big as your hand, something of that size. It doesn't really matter, but that's a good size to start with. And what we do is to turn it round like that and stitch it into a cone shape. And you have to be careful because it's fairly sharp along the edges, but if you overlap it a distance of about two centimetres, you'll find it's much easier to work. The stitching, well, you can do it with all sorts of things, but I find a piece of wire is best, especially if it's stiff enough not to bend when you poke it through, but narrow enough to go with ease through the holes of the gauze. Well, there are two things you must do before you start. One is to file the point onto it, and that stops it snagging in the wire. And the second is to get a pair of pliers and just give that point a bit of a kink. You'll see how useful that is when I come to stitch it. For stitching, well, risk your fingers, double it over, don't try and do it all at once, but with a good overlap, start with a piece of wire pushing it through. And you'll see here where that kink is good. First of all, it goes down through the wire. Then you turn it round, and so it comes up through the wire like a curved needle. Hold the next bit together, turn the wire over so it goes down through the wire, and so you go. Until you reach the top. And at the top, Bend that loose bit over, so there's no big hole, push this wire through it, and then you've got at the top something you can make into a hanging hook, or you can bring it down the side as a handle. Either way, get it out of the line of fire. Now down at the bottom, you need to make sure that that end of the cone can fit inside a little can, something like a boot tin lid. That's just a bit big, so I'm going to get the scissors and cut up alongside the wire. and then around it. And if I judge it correctly, that's going to be just the right size to fit inside the can lid. And there we go. At that stage, cut the wire off here and make it into a little hook. And that's the top part of your safety device. Now put that to one side and take up the can lid. Old boot polish tin is great. Get a probe, something like a sharp spike, and make three holes. One there, one there, and one over there, at equal distances around the can. And the way the thing's to go thing goes together is this. You hook that into here. The cone goes down inside the lid like that. And then you can use another piece of wire through these two holes to secure it in place. And with the candle inside, that would be finished, if we cleaned it up a bit. Here's the finished article over here. Melt the bottom of the candle so it forms a bed in there. And that means that even though the candle can twirl round, it can't fall over. That's pretty important. You need to light it, of course, before you assemble it, because you can't light it through the gauze. It just doesn't let the flame through. But we're away now, and by hooking the cover into there, swing it up and seat it without knocking the candle out. And then, with a slightly neater bolt this time, Put it through that hole and through the other. And that will be the finished article. There we go. And this one's got a handle 
instead of a hanging device. And you can see the difference, even with the candle flame playing on the edge there, if I put some paper there, it may char, but it'll take a while to do it, and it doesn't catch a light. It's a very much safer device. Well, why don't you use aluminium? Well, for the very good reason that aluminium goes to oxide, and when it goes to oxide, it does let the flame through, or it can, and, of course, the oxide is very brittle, and you can poke holes in it, which means that it doesn't really um, act as gauze any further. So go for bronze gauze, if you can get an off-cut, make it into a cone, and you can make yourself a very safe little camping candle cover. I want to know Curiosity